everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. Great show planned. Let's get right downstairs and get the show started. Okay, we're back down the basement and a uh, couple things I want to talk. We do have a big mosh today, but the, the first thing I want to talk about was a couple videos ago, I made a, um, a video regarding my new fence. And, uh, and thank you all for, for your comments. I love the comments that you, you leave about different things. And uh, a couple people left a comment that was saying, hey, the, the bracing looks wrong on the fence. Actually, I asked uh, Dave um, to, to put those bracing in in that way. Um, and the reason I did is because uh, I've, I've experimented now, I'm no engineer, but I've experimented with a lot, you know, especially in model airplane building and things like that. I experimented a lot in structural integrity. In fact, I built a couple gates in my backyard one time and I did, uh, I did them with opposite uh, bracing on there to see which one would hold up better. And I thought we would talk about that really uh, quick because it, it is a fa fascinating subject and uh, the, uh, the argument of compression versus tension has been going on for uh, for almost a century so let's talk about now it. years ago we were taught in school that the strongest of all the shapes is a triangle then comes a square and one of the least uh favorable shapes is the rectangle because the rectangle uh along with all other uh type of uh, structures like this have a tendency to rack and what racking is, is this. You see this? Now, um, in order to fight the rack, they've tried all different ways. They put a, a brace in the middle here, which basically makes it like two boxes. And that helps the rack a little bit, but it's still able to rack even with that middle piece in there. So they've tried all different ways to uh to to strengthen up gates and doors and things like that we we've, we've used gussets gussets are uh small triangular pieces over in the corners here to make that stronger but eventually you'll still get sag sag is where the weight of the gate pulls down on one side or the other so the longer the gate the more of an issue this is so we have to determine how can we strengthen this up without overdoing it without having a hundred different you know ups and downs and lefts and rights so traditionally when you see a gate being made you know they do one across the middle like this and that is because it helps it doesn't eliminate because you still can get the the racking you see how that'll still rack but it helps because and you got to remember something you know there's not a tremendous amount of weight you know, we're not talking about thousands of pounds. We're only trying to get rid of this from, from uh, racking. So uh, in different ways, they had they came up with different angles to try and do this. Some put braces in the corner, and the more you come out and whatever. And then they came out with the diagonal brace, which is basically two triangles, almost triangles, which is a very strong and uh, a very durable Brace now we just added this cross brace here and you could see it is very rigid I can't rack this anymore. So that is the way to brace a gate with a cross brace uh, Now here comes the issue. Do you cross brace from the top down or from the bottom up depending on where the hinge is now this is where the debate has come in over the years and it's very fascinating and and tremendously interesting to me now this this whole little uh demonstration model i made up is just held in with pins they're basically nails that are bent over so they don't fall out but you could see even with pins that you you can rack it easily without the brace but with the brace it's steady and solid so it it, it definitely works but and either way will work there's no wrong way to do it however there are better ways to utilize the materials you have and let's talk about that real quick compression versus tension. Now, to understand compression and tension we have to think about certain items we have are really good at strength in the tension aspect like this piece of flat steel now i could pull i could put hundreds of pounds on here pulling apart it'll never pull apart however if i was to put a few pounds this way compression it bends you see because it can't handle the compression but it can handle a ton of weight in the tension mode uh concrete is like that that's why they put rebar in concrete because 
Concrete can, uh, can withstand tons of pressure, but if you were to take a piece of concrete and pull it apart, you know, it would, it would come right apart, and that's why the rebar is in Now, here is our model gate set up in the compression mode, and what I mean by that is, here is the gate with the, the brace going from the lower hinge to the top of the middle of the gate. You can see it runs that way. Now, what happens when I put force on here, it transfers in compression down here to this part of the hinge area, okay? So it's compression. Now, if this was a piece of flat steel that could bow, you could see what happens if I push down on this hard enough, this would bow and the gate would sag. You know, obviously it'd be a lot of weight. That is set up in the compression Situation. Now, here's the same exact gate set up in the tension mode. And what I mean by that is uh, the hinge, where the hinge is, is the top brace going down lower. And now, what happens is when we apply weight to this outside edge, what happens is the weight is transferred down to here and it pulls. It's pulling this. If I was to put a lot of weight on here, it would put uh, extreme stress on pulling this part here, the brace. Now, most materials, majority materials, are much stronger in the tension aspect than they are in the compression aspect. So uh, that's the argument. Which gate is stronger? Which gate? So you'll see many gates are set up um, both ways. And it, a lot of it has to do with, number one, your fasteners, how the gate is fastened, whether it's wood, whether it's uh, steel or things like that. Some people use the tension bracing by using a cable they take a cable they run a cable from here to here you've seen that before cable has very high tension strength obviously has zero compression strength so very interesting uh topic of so discussion. my question to you is uh which gate style do you prefer do you prefer a compression style or a uh, tension style you know did you ever think about it you know it's something to think about you know engineering is fascinating and, um, you know, a lot of times the old time farmers, you know, learned because they didn't have computer simulation and they knew what worked. And believe it or not, some gate setups were set up because if you live in a rainy area, a, uh, a compression style gate will make the water drip down to the lower fence post and uh, it would rot out the fence post. So believe it or not, there's a lot of things that we don't know about that, you know, people over the years have the reason they do what they do. Uh, depends on the area, depends on the type of fasteners, the type of wood, the type of material. Very interesting subject. Let's see what else okay, we got. we're back upstate, but I got to show you something that uh, is pretty interesting. I haven't seen it like this before. Now, it's been about uh, 10 days since I've been up here, but uh, when I come up here, the whole lawn is covered with orange hawkweed. Can you see that beautiful orange tone? It's kind of hard to see, but uh, it is absolutely beautiful. There's a, a nice tone of orange on top of the whole lawn. These are kind of an invasive weed, so uh, they're really not good to have, but they just look so beautiful with all that orange, and it is such a pretty flower. Take a look at how nice this is, how nice it looks. There you go. Can you see that? Yeah, we get focus on there. Just beautiful, huh? And the whole lawn is covered with them. Just amazing. Tons of butterflies, tons of bees. I got to cut now, them down. Now, while I was upstate, I, I kind of went into a little bit of a time machine in the parking lot of Home Depot. And I just want to share it with you. I was so excited. It made my day. Years ago, I used to go to a lot of car shows. And I wasn't so much into the Corvettes and Chevelles and things like that that most other guys were into. I always liked the oddball cars, you know. Uh, the Rivieras, the uh, Belvederes, you know, the unusual ones that you didn't see a lot of car shows. But here's one you, you wouldn't have seen at a car show because it was just a regular transportation vehicle. But... Take a look at this. You old timers will know what I'm talking about. 1972 Chevy wagon. Back in time. Check Here's this out. Here's a special shout out to my old timers out there. Look at this Chevy 400. Look at that with the wood grain on the doors. <laughs> the wraparound rear window. The Kingswood Estate. Kingswood Estate. 
Remember these? Now this was cool about this rear door. Half of that door went into the bottom underneath and the top window slid up. Do you remember that? Man, look at this. This is like a trip back in time. Haven't seen one of these in 30 years. Isn't that fantastic? You know, if there's one thing that I uh, feel bad for the newer generation is that they will never experience the bench seat. You know, the bench seat. For you, I know you old timers know what I'm talking about. There was nothing in the world like sitting in a bench seat and that front seat and having your girlfriend slide over and and put her head and you know put your arm around it was just the, the best thing ever and and you know that the new generation will never experience that what a shame it's a travesty bring back the bench seats darn it okay let's get to a project today for today's project we're just going to do a cleanup because the paint is still 99 percent here we just got a little bit of scuffing no rust or anything um and we're going to be doing a lot of lanterns this month so uh, for you lantern guys you'll enjoy it uh hopefully i'll turn some of you other people on to lanterns now let me tell you about this one here this is a a, a lantern it's called a railroad inspection lantern or a, you know flashlight as some people call it it was made by the star headlight and lantern company and they were upstate new york and they've been there for uh, since 1889 it's amazing they're still in business they still produce these lanterns but they're a little bit different take a look at what they look like now a little bit different but amazing that they're still in business fifth generation jacobs family i think it is and it's uh just phenomenal that they're still and you know so this one here is uh typical it's a six volt how you open it is you push it in you turn it give it a little turn to the left you can see the battery compartments clean but we'll clean it up a little bit we're just going to do a quick cleanup and let me uh talk about why I love these type lanterns. So now here it is. You can see it's taken all apart. Really nothing much to it. A reflector. It's a, a piece of polycarbonate for the lens here. And uh, here's the inside. Like I said, the battery compartment. And it has a little screw in bulb. I believe it's a 426 bulb, a little six volt bulb. And uh, it gets good battery life because it, you know, doesn't, and it uses our regular six volt can battery. This one here happens to be rechargeable, which is really nice. And let me show you what's interesting here. What looks like a normal toggle switch, you see that? Looks like a normal toggle switch. Look at here how this switch activates. All it is, you can see how that works. It's a contact. It goes from here off to there on it makes con that's all it is so you don't have to worry about switches going it's, it's simplicity at its best that's why they've been around for so long let's clean it up put it back together and see how this baby okay works. we're calling this project done like i said this is just a cleanup because i actually use this in my backyard you could see we just uh polished out the paint you know did a little buffing took the paint off the rear cap because it was too much chipping now you could actually see the uh the writing on there and you could see where it does says star headlight and lantern company and uh and over there they were in uh Hondine falls new york usa and you could see that now this everything since it's so clean everything just goes on nice and easy we'll pop the battery in here just goes in just like that um line up the two holes here they get pushed in and then just give a 16th of a turn to the right now that's locked in and uh and then we could see here the switch it does work and it is a uh it is a lovely light isn't it and just uh something i use all the time let me show you what this beam looks like outside compared to the others doesn't have the same type of uh strength as the other beams this is a smaller bowl but it it really does a great job the batteries last a long time it's durable and it's old timey you know you can't it, would i take this backpacking you know compared to this absolutely not however you know there's something about using old stuff that's why i keep the original incandescent bulbs because it, it has a warm look to it instead of that bluish light it's you can't go back in time if you're using modern stuff. Now, here are what the three beams look like outside. Krypton to the left, to the star in the middle, and there's the blue LED on the right. Okay, this is one heck of a mosh, isn't it? Now, uh, a lot of you might be thinking that I might have missed over something. I did not miss the fact that today is Flag Day. Let's talk about okay, that. Okay, so being it is Flag Day today, I thought I would go a little over the top and put up a temporary 
flag pole. Now I bought this flag pole to put up state actually. It's a, it's one of those sectional type, the uh, the ones that you can in telescoping and uh, which is good, you know, but um, I, I didn't cement this in obviously. It's just for flag day, but I, I will, I dug the hole and I will be putting in a flag very similar to this, very similar to this pole, very similar to my neighbor's flag pole over there that she don't usually use too much, but that's what it's going to look like. And uh, here we are, flag. Now, like I mentioned, this is a telescoping type flagpole that I bought for using upstate that I could take it in and out when I'm not there. And I'm showing you in real time how long it takes to take down this pole. And you can see there's little detents that the pole slides down within each other. And then you just unclip the flag and uh, the whole pole comes out. It's, it's very convenient and uh, a nice little pole. So in closing, like I said, this might have been one of my greatest moshes of all time. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. I hope you enjoy Flag Day. Get your flag up and out there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.